Um, Secretary Florino, gentlemen, uh, I think it's pretty obvious that there's frustration with respect to this issue, and that frustration didn't just start with this administration. This issue has been ongoing for some time, and I certainly share the, the thoughts that Senator McCain expressed and Senator Brown uh, obviously expressed also about the fact that in the eyes of the American people, we seem to be treading water on this issue while Iran is just sitting back and doing their thing and, and frankly, uh, almost sticking their finger in our eye. And it really is, as Senator McCain uh, said in so many words, time to ratchet up the rhetoric, uh, quit ratcheting up the rhetoric and start ratcheting up the activity. And um, if we don't, we're going to look back and all of a sudden they're going to have a weapon. I'm not certain with all that I've uh, learned over the years that we can do anything to stop that now. Um, but um, I, I appreciate what you said, Secretary Burns, about the opportunity that may be there. Um, several of us just got back from Vienna and meeting with uh, Director General Amano and other folks at the IAEA, and frankly, the previous leadership at the IAEA, in my opinion, was no leadership at all. It was extremely weak under El Baraday. But Director General Amano is, is really taking this issue on uh, uh, head first and has um, seems like accomplished more in a few weeks than El, Bar El Baraday accomplished in several years. So I'm hopeful that with his help that your optimism uh, uh, may bear fruit. Um, let me direct this, I, I guess, probably maybe to Secretary Flournoy <laughs> and General Cartwright and General Burgess. Uh, how concerned are you that Iran has now told us that they are rich, enriching uranium to uh, 20 percent? Um, I think uh, any steps that Iran takes to uh, uh, go down the enrichment path are, are worrisome, and so we are uh, concerned about that. Even though that is not a weapons grade level, uh, we don't want to make, see them making progress. I think uh, in the fact is they have also been having some technical problems with their program as well. Well, do you think they have the capacity to turn that uranium into fuel? Into fuel for power reactors, or no, for no, into into weapons use. Into well, weapons. Um, I think that um, that is certainly their aspiration. I think if they went down that path, um, we would at, at this point in time we would know about it. Well, the IAEA expressed concern to our group about military work and design, and certainly that may be somewhat explained by um, uh, work on conventional weapons. Uh, but when you look at the combination of this added enrichment plus their obvious work on weapon systems, uh, uh, General Burgess, maybe I'll direct this to you. Uh, is there anything you can tell us about what may be going on with the combination of those two factors now in, in public? Sir, that would be better in closed hearing. Okay. Um, General Cartwright, could you comment on the capabilities of our GC naval forces, particularly as it relates to their ability to deny us access to the Strait of Hormuz in between the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman? Uh, several CENTCOM commanders have in the past uh, discussed Iran's military hardware acquisitions and the development tactics seem to indicate that they might be posturing themselves in a manner that would allow them to deny us access to that area? Uh, Senator, I think in, in general terms, um, they are fortifying their capabilities to either reduce or deny access or constrict it. Um, the difficulty here is one of uh, tactics and objectives. Um, if they close the straits off, they're closing off their only supply lines also. And so, um, you know, this would be a pretty significant activity in their calculus. Um, but to have the physical capacity to, to attempt to do that, they are moving in that direction. Um, we believe that um, we would be able to maintain the, the straits, but it would be a question of time and impact 
and the implications uh, from a global standpoint on the flow of energy, et cetera, would have ramifications probably beyond the military actions that would go on. General Burgess, when General Petraeus was before the committee um, <clears throat> about, <clears throat> pardon me, three or four weeks ago, we discussed the at least public dwindling of influence by the Iranians in Iraq. Uh, with the election dispute ongoing between um, Prime Minister Maliki and former Prime Minister Alawi, uh, have you determined that there may again be increased Iranian influence being undertaken uh, with respect to the dispute that seems to be ongoing internally? Uh, sir, we've seen no discernible change in the actions. Uh, it, the Iranian uh, uh, folks are still trying to play on the ground with the current situation, but it's the stuff that they're doing day to day. Uh, it would be unfair for me to characterize that as, as we've seen a, a change with this latest, uh, you know, election uh, piece going on. Yeah. How about from a weapons standpoint? Uh, sir, no, no discernible uh, change uh, from what we've seen in the past. Uh, any change in um, weapons going into Afghanistan that you've noticed? Uh, from Iran? Uh, sir, the, uh, no, sir. I, I would say what we have seen in the past is, has been the current uh, uh, tempo. Uh, you know, most recently we found a cache there around Herat uh, that was found in 2009 of uh, some movement of some of some stuff in Iranian C4 and some other. I think the chairman has talked about that up here uh, before. Of course, what is unknown is when did it go in uh, to the country of Afghanistan? We don't know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Chambliss. Uh, we're going to move to executive session, but I want to clarify something.